Let's prepare on the materials and specifications of steel. So today we are going to start the steel structures subject. Okay, so the steel structures will be a very difficult subject for most of the students. But actually, uh, this is full of formulas, and if you have a good memory power, means you can. Crack some questions here because mostly the basic questions and repeated questions will be asked from the steel structures, and you can leave some uh, tedious problems also. So that is also there in the subject, but you can leave that. But first, you should leave the fear of this steel structures subject. So let us start newly. Let us prepare newly with this steel structures. So the first chapter is going to be with materials and specifications fully about the steel. So just we are going to see everything about the steel here. Okay. So before going into the steel, first let us see something about the iron here. So there are different types of iron. So one is the pure iron, which is of zero percentage carbon content, and it is a natural metal which is of silvery white color, which is highly ductile and reacts with oxygen easily, so that it is not used in the construction purposes. Okay. So this is the first step. So this is all not very important, but you should be known uh, these okay should be known of these so that is only uh, that is why i am telling these everything and the next is the pig iron which is having 4 to 5 percentage of carbon content in it so it is a raw iron and it, this is also not used in the construction and the next is the cast iron which is having 2 to 4.5 percentage carbon content and this is the structural element so they use this and the wrought iron so which is lowest carbon content of 0 to 0 0.1 percentage and this is a very high ductile property so ductile means nothing but it is a stretching behavior of the metals okay and then steel so this is having less than two percentage carbon content so it is an alloy of iron carbon chromium copper magnesium nickel silica so everything may be and there is no defined proportions for all these so generally it is an alloy of iron and carbon and then the mild steel so which is having 0.25 percentage of carbon content and then the stainless steel so stainless steel is nothing but the alloy of uh, iron and chromium so here are some basic properties of steel you should be very clear about these so i have squared some uh, formulas now so there are some six definitions here that is e. e is nothing but the modulus of elasticity then the density of steel and then specific gravity then g that is the rigidity modulus mu poisson's ratio and thermal coefficient alpha so these six properties are very very important for the steel so you should be very thorough with this six values of steel okay so the first one is e which is equal to 2 into 10 power 5 mpa so you can also write it as 200 gpa and with respect to aluminium, they have given that aluminium's E will be equal to 1 by 3rd of the steel's Eng's modulus. So they have given it as around 0.7 into 10 power 5 MPa. So the first thing is over. The next thing is the density of the steel, so which is equal to 7850 kilogram per meter cube. And here also it is uh, 1 by 3rd of the steel's density only, aluminium's density. So approximately it is 2700. And then the specific gravity of steel is 7.85. And then the rigidity modulus of steel is 0 0.769 into 10 power 5 MPa. Then Poisson's ratio of steel is 0 0.286 on accurate. On general, you can term it as 0 0.3. So if 0 0.3 is there, means you can go for that option. And then thermal coefficient, which is equal to 12 into 10 power minus 6 per degree Celsius. So this thermal coefficient is the same for concrete also. So that only we mix steel with concrete. Okay. And then this point is also very important. That is we saw carbon content in different ions. No. So the carbon content increases means it means the strength of that metal also increases. As the carbon content increases, the strength will be increasing but what happens when the strength increases it means the toughness of that material also increases so if the toughness increases then ductility will be decreasing so the ductile behavior of that metal will be decreasing okay and then there are some code books with reference to different, uh, different types of the 
uh, iron used or steel used so we can see that also the first one is is 800 2007 so this is of code of practice for use of structural steel in the general building okay and the next is is226 which is of standard quality this code is used for buildings and bridges etc and for this type of uh, metal the welding is permitted up to 20 mm only okay so the welding is permitted up to 20 mm but the bolt and riveting can be provided here can be done for all the thickness and then here the elongation and carbon content is important so we will be seeing another two codes also so for both uh, for all these three you should be clear of this carbon content and elongation so here the elongation of the metal is 23 degree or uh, 23 percentage and carbon content is 0.23 to 0.25 percentage and then IS2062 which is fusion welding type so here structure subjected to dynamic load and impact for this only this uh, code is generally used and the steel is generally used for this purpose and here the elongation is 23 percentage and carbon content is 0 0.2 to 0.25 percentage and then IS961 this is used for high tensile steel and uh, this method is used for uh, steel which is having greater strength and if there is atmospheric corrosion means also it resists more okay and here the elongation is 20 percentage and carbon content is 0.27 percentage the next comes the type of the rolled steel section so there are various types of rolled steel so we will be seeing all those things and don't get afraid of this isjb islb and everything no need to mug up or don't need to study that but if you see that means and if you see the uh, definition for that means itself it is enough you can judge that mostly they will be not asking but you should be uh, known of these uh, forms okay and the first one is the rolled steel i sections or beams so i sections is generally used as beams so isjb islb so all these is is nothing but it is indian standard okay and b is the beam here so it is beam no so beam so the middle letter that is the third letter only differs here so we just we can know that alone so here isjb means it is indian standard junior beam then indian standard light beam indian standard medium weight beam indian indian standard wide flange beam indian standard heavy beam and the last sc is nothing but indian section column so here the wide flange is used for mainly lateral loads and heavy flange is mainly used for vertical loads okay so normally they will be denoted like this ISLB 500 at 735.8 Newton per meter so this is one example so why I have given this is they should be represented with the depth and weight so this is an important point so here 500 is the depth of that I, I section and the weight is the 735.8 Newton per meter so this is important so when you are taking the I section so the stop portion no so it is called as flange and this middle portion is called as web okay so this flange mainly resists the bending moment and the web mainly resists the shear force so this is also important and then in the rolled section there are many uh, types i.e yeah, angle box section square section rectangular many types are there so out of these all the circular hollow section no so this is only best for columns so this is also an important point and then the second type so the second type is nothing but the rolled steel channel section before we saw i section no so here it is channel section so channel section means it will be like a c like shape okay so here also isjc islc so again it is indian standard junior channel indian standard light channel indian standard uh, medium weight channel and indian standard medium weight channel uh, here MCP no so it is nothing but it is with parallel flange whereas ISMC is with sloping flange so that is the difference here and then ISGC means it is Indian standard gate channel and here also it is represented with depth and weight so this is also important for channel section also it is represented with depth and weight and then the rolled steel T section so here ISNT that is Indian standard rolled normal t section isdt dplex section uh, islt slight lit weight and slight light weight and ismt it is medium weight and uh, ishht means it is hatch sections okay so here also this t sections is represented with 
depth and weight of the sections so here comes the last method rolled steel angle sections so here there are two types only one is with equal angle so the size or the length is same no so it is equal means it is equal angle if it is unequal means unequal angle that's all so here indian standard equal angle and indian standard unequal angle isea and isea so here if you see the example it is given as isea 100 cross 100 cross 10 mm no so it means the first two is the length of the legs that is 100 mm length in the x axis and 100 mm in y axis and the 10 mm is the thickness so in all the other cases uh, the sections are represented with the weight and depth but only in this angle section it is represented with the uh, dimensions of the legs and the thickness okay so this is important and then comes the working stress method so now we are going to just see what is working stress method and what is limit state method that's all with this unit okay so the first thing is working stress method so working stress method uh, normally this is the used for the practical design that is safe working uh, stress which should be always greater than no sorry which should be always lesser than the permissible stress so that it is safe for the structure and next what is the permissible stress means it is the allowable stress that is given to the structure so it is given as yield stress by factor of safety so normally we tell no factor of safety is equal to yield stress by working stress like that will be telling us no? so that is only given here and then uh, the stress due to uh, load has been given here so we'll see that so the stress due to dead load and wing load should be less than the permissible stress dead load and live load also should be less than the permissible stress but dead load plus wing load plus live load means it should be less than 1.33 times the permissible stress so this is an important point it means that the 30 per 33 percentage has been increased for the safety when all these three loads come in together okay and these everything also important it is based on is 81984 that is various stresses are given so permissible average shear stress is 0.4 fy and maximum shear stress 0.45 fy so all these are permissible values only so you should be clear with this uh, permissible axial tensile stress 0.6 fy permissible bending tensile stress 0.66 fy bending compressive stress also 0.66 fy permissible bearing stress is 0.75 fy and permissible combined bearing and bending means it is 0.9 fy so it is easy to remember just for study the order and then you can study 0 0.4 0 0.45 0 0.6 0 0.66 like that okay so in the rating i have given the answers now 100 110 and all so this is nothing but i have written the values for 250 that is fy if it is a mild steel means we put it as 250 no so 0 0.4 into 250 you will get 100 0.45 into 250 you will get 110 so for fe 250 i have written the values here and then the minimum thickness based on this working stress method is given here so when the steel is directly exposed to weather and accessible for painting and cleaning means it should be 6 mm minimum thickness should be 6 mm and then it is directly exposed to weather but not accessible for painting and cleaning means it is 8 mm so these two values are also very important and then the limit state design so the limit state design means itself we split it into strength wise and serviceability wise okay so strength means it is of the ultimate thing and serviceability means if it happens means also we can adjust like that only the serviceability conditions will be there okay so let us see some difference between that uh, this may also be asked in objective questions like that if some four options will be given out of these which is not a serviceability condition like that also they will be asking so just known uh, knowing about these is good so strength means it is yielding uh, stability against the overturn fracture plastic collapse brittle failure also will be happening but in serviceability deflection vibration fatty cracks only will occur corrosion and fire so these are serviceability conditions and then the design loads with this we'll cover this topic design load is nothing but uh, the load which is we are going to apply for the structure which is denoted as fd which is equal to gamma f into characteristic load so the gamma f is nothing but the uh, safety factor so we generally use this for uh, rcc also no for some concrete also no so the same thing is only given here so characteristic load also we everybody knows it is nothing but the value of the load which has an access acceptable probability of 
not being exceeding 95 percentage okay so during the lifespan of the structure so that is only the characteristic load so here uh, gamma f into characteristic load is given here so the strength and serviceability for both the conditions the combination of the factor of safety is given here so for dead load and wind load it is 1.5 1.5 and for dead load and uh, wind load plus live load it is 1.2 1.2 1.2 and dead load and wind load it is 1.5 and 1.5 so this is uh, nothing but if the dead load and live load is given and they have asked to find the uh, limit state method or design load for the strength means you should take the 1.5 as the gamma f that is the factor of safety so that is only the case given here and in serviceability if you see means the same thing will be here so instead of 1.5 here 1 they will be using and instead of 1.2 they will be using 0.8 whereas in this point alone 1 will be used okay so this is the difference so you should be very clear of this and the next is the partial safety factor so this is also very important uh, so this partial safety factor is given for the resistance governed by yielding resistance of member to buckling and resistance governed by ultimate stress so these three conditions is enough and this is important so for yielding and buckling we always take partial safety factors 1.1 only and for the ultimate stress alone we take a higher value of 1.25 Thank you and keep watching for the next lecture on stress strain curve of steel.